What's up YouTube and welcome back to Redbeard's Garage. In today's episode, we're starting the twin engine go-kart build. So Duramax came to us on Instagram and asked us about some of their engines and we wanted to get a couple of their 18 horses to do a sweet twin engine go-kart build. Now these are 440 cc's, 18 horse and 21 foot pounds of torque. So that should be quite a bit of power. That's way more torque and horsepower than our V-twin go-kart has. So um, we're gonna slap these engines on with a couple of Go Power Sports 40 series torque converters. Now if you're using anything with a one inch shaft, I recommend using the 40 series. They are quite a bit more money but they're you know 10 times beefier than a 30 series and a 30 series just simply is not going to hold up when you put this much power to it you're going to shred belts and just have a whole mess on your hands so we're going to throw a couple of 40 series torque converters and go power sports now has these nice covers that are really nice if you're using it on a mini bike so the belt if it ever did break it won't slap in the legs because that can hurt uh, we probably won't be using the covers on this build just because this is so crammed already. These engines with the torque converter installed at their widest point are 19 inches long, or wide I should say. That's a, that's a huge engine setup. So that means we're gonna have to have 42 inch uh, engine cage swing arm on the back of this go-kart just to be able to have a comfortable amount of room in between each engine and you know just make uh, maintenance easy on this go-kart. Uh, we're gonna use a 54 inch axle on this build uh, just to get past the sheer size of this engine swing arm uh, we're going to have to use that 54 inch axle and the only bad thing we're using the yerf dog budget build the one with the tecumseh six and a half horse on it and the go-kart frame itself is like 34 inches wide so that means this is going to be a monstrous wide axle sitting behind the go-kart so uh, in a later build on it we're going to have to extend the front end and just do some body modifications so this thing don't look so wonky with this massive engine section on the back but we're going to do a couple of uh, go power sports mechanical disc brakes with the eight inch disc we're going to do two of them on it just to stop this big heavy bulky thing and uh, i'm excited about this build we're going to get the yerk dog in here we're going to strip off that engine section we're going to start building the rear engine swing arm for this build uh, this is going to be an awesome build i'm hoping it'll ride a willy so let's get started Little Volkswagen exhaust pipe coming out the back. Mm -hmm. Probably filled with water because I forgot it was pointing up and it's been rained on. So she's really happy jacked up that high. So we got to uh, loosen up the shocks and then we can take out the two bolts holding this main engine set. We're probably gonna have to cut all these off um, to fit those two engines in there. Mm -hmm. I would think for sure. We're gonna do bigger shocks as well on the back. So let's get this. We take might get by what we on this tall bar. We gotta think this is, we're gonna put longer shocks in this, mm -hmm. of course. But I did think about doing uh, a swing arm type deal so the axle would ride about right here and the two engines right in here so the engines are mounted solid and then have a big swing arm i don't know if we got the pipe to be making those hmm. you know for bearings to go in to make a big swing arm that'd be a pretty awesome setup though mm -hmm. we did get it made so we're going to start with taking off the off the shocks and we unhook the motor section roll it back and start building the new section uh, for the motor to sit on Muffler seat. I was wondering what's keeping it from going down for them. That's why I built that exhaust. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll make the limit straps for that.
So, there she is. The whole uh, engine section is off there. We'll probably have to either remake some of these or use these on the new engine section. We can just use straight tabs. Let's weld some. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if I got any much thick oh. stuff left. We'll check the inventory. Yeah, we we'll to them off. Just weld it on top and bottom. Ain't weld on sides. So now we can figure out how. This go kart also needs a new seat on it. The seat's rotted uh, completely to nothing. But I highly doubt we're going to be able to clear this with the engines. Right. I think just cut it completely off. Right. Every bit of it. Cut it clean so we can maybe re weld it even higher up right. to make it look cool or something. Right. So I'll start uh, cutting this thing. Water. The row cage. Yeah. And wasn't paying attention. And I got done. My whole pants were black from that water, black water swinging out there. That. That's just like. I guess my welding hood was laying in the floor. Because <laughs> last night when I put my welding hood on, yeah. weld on my car, I got in the so house and I had black <laughs> all around my head. So there's all that water that was slinging on us when we was riding this thing when we built it. Uh, I think I'm going to also be welding the row cage on this. I don't like bolt-on row cages. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, it won't take nothing to uh, weld this thing on. Take my loose stuff. So pour it to the inside. Yep. Bye. Right. Uh... That's a good gap that way, it penetrated all the way. Oh yeah, over there. So what did we guess on the deep? <laughs> Look how wide that mother flipper is. It had to be though, there's no other way. 19 inch wide, I mean that torque right, right I'm gonna say 20, you can go 23. What do you mean? 23. Oh, deep, yeah. inside to inside. Yeah, that way we'd have plenty of room. No, yeah, nothing. yeah, I want to have plenty of room because we still got to mount a battery. Yeah. If possible. Well, let's go, let's go two foot, 24 inches. All right, because I got that. Napa batter should be perfect. Yeah. So basically to keep everything all square and uh, whatnot, he's clamping them to this solid piece of pipe. I've had this pipe laying around forever and someone, uh, this guy at Barnyard Fab bent me a bunch of 90s and 45s. So we have a lot of this pipe laying around. Is we this the size of sticks. die that you have? For you? Uh, I think that pipe bender is, what is this, inch and a half? Uh, I think so. Yes, if it's inch and a half, that's what yeah, I that's have. What size, I think it's, that's what size yeah. I like to use on everything. So I already have the die for my pipe bender for this and I'm picking Even up. big buggies, I like this size pipe. Well, that's what he uses, isn't it? No, he uses inch and seven eighths. Oh, okay. Well, on yeah, the four-cylinder buggies, he uses this. On the smaller buggies. So we're getting pretty close on this rear section. Like I said, it's gonna be crazy uh, wide compared to the go-kart, but uh, it's gonna work out great. Uh, this is supposed to be a crazy awesome go-kart, so I think it'll be a statement with a huge rear end on this thing. But, and we'll probably adapt the front and make it a little bit better, but I'll show you what we're doing uh, for the motor mounts on the rear. So old Brandon has cut, and I've been filming him cut and weld this round tubing, which is inch and a half. So we took some one inch square tubing, which you see running alongside of the engine plate, and we used some exhaust flanges from Go Power Sports as spacers. If you'll notice, we did two right there, two right there, two on each corner of the engine plate, pretty much. He's gonna weld that plate to this uh, one inch square tubing, and then to the 
the swing arm and then once that's all tacked into place we can move this block and this one and three quarter inch piece of square and then put our other piece of square tubing in oh, well, other piece of square tubing so uh then we'll have to measure out the other one find out the spacing of the motors uh, because it's so wide with the engines with the torque converter what i say 19 inches 19 inches torque converter now is that the yeah. cover now no that's not the cover that's just a, i was oh. figure we wouldn't run covers oh. the covers are awesome i love the go power sports covers but on this really don't care we're gonna have a seat blocking us from a belt so should be all right if we break a belt so uh, we'll get this all tacked into place So we're going to install this big behemoth uh, 40 series onto the end zone. Actually, you know what we need to check? Need to check and make sure. Never mess with a, a Duramax engine. I want to make sure the threads is right because these look a little small. The threads look smaller than these. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go get some, go get some bolts. Yeah, we're seeing what the uh, thread pattern is. I wonder if a 212 threads are the same. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Good gravy. Oh yeah, got the new uh, foot pump in for the pipe bender. So, we'll get some sick buggy soon. Freaking sick, dude. Just freaking jump the driveway, burn it to the ground. That's a pickle. I wish the manual would tell me what uh, thread pattern they are so I could run to town and at least get four of them. Son of a biscuit eating bullfrog. Duramax, uh, first off, put it in your manual of what the uh, thread pitch is for the side cover. Please, please do that for me. Okay, so there's that engine section, that big behemoth. We're gonna put more axle bearings on it. We're gonna go with four axle bearings. Uh, we only have two welded on there right now. And I always put ears on my outer axle bearings uh, just because we're gonna thrash this thing. We're probably gonna bend an axle because we're gonna ride it so hard. But we got to mount up. So basically I took these are go-kart spindles I cut down from Go Power Sports, and then we're gonna weld them back together in the center there. Um, I didn't wanna use the factory ones, the factory C, C pieces of metal off the frame because we're gonna actually do something with that frame. It's gonna be kinda neat. So, uh, and I'll show you what spindles I'm talking about for the people that doesn't know. So on the front of a go-kart, you have these C's welded to your 
of these spindle mounts welded to your frame and then your spindle goes in between there this is a springer spindle you can see the spring there gives you a little bit of suspension in like a yard cart i use these brackets all the time like what we're doing on this one we cut them down we're going to weld them back together and then weld them to this back uh, engine frame to give a pivot point now these are handy just to have because they're super thick they're a like quarter inch thick of steel and they work really good so uh yeah keep these around they're handy links will be in the description below where you can get these uh, uh springer spindles i like to buy the the non-springer ones because they're shorter and they kind of tend to work better in my applications so we got to get this leveled up and pushed up to those brackets then we can tack it into place then we can unbolt it and tack or fully weld everything off the go-kart and uh once we find out where we're going to mount our other axle brackets and we can pretty much dress out our axle throw it on there put both engines on there and i was going to go with 50 to 54 tooth uh, sprockets but look what i found found a couple used 60 tooths that i did not know i had so this is going to come in super handy because uh this is going to give us the torque that we wanted and like we're saying we're hoping it's just going to be stupid torque on this thing so let's see oh who's here the mailman Hey. Hey. <laughs> what you doing? We're working on the old twin engine. Can I come in? Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to get it all square. I think like that's it. I'm going to tack it. Got it all packed in place. <laughs> thinking about not having enough axle uh, to put wheels on we only have five inches hanging off each side which of course isn't enough to put some wheels on so that's unfortunate so we looked up ordering a wider axle the only ones we can find are 75 inches and they're over a hundred dollars and they're not nickel plated or anything which means they're going to rust pretty quick and that just is a headache if you're you know wanting to do a gear change later or anything it's really hard to get sprockets and brake rotors off of those rusted axles so I think in the next episode, we're going to make our own axle, probably like a 65 inch wide axle. And we're going to put some of those 22 by 10 by 10s from Go Power Source, those V treads on it. And that should give us plenty of room. So definitely stay tuned. We're not messing with the shifter cart because we're waiting on parts to come in for it. We needed a few things and we may be building a frame instead of using that Murray frame. The only reason why is because there's not any room. Once the header bends around behind the seat, we're not going to have any room. Um, on the frame we're going to be crowded especially shifting gears you don't want to be crowded so uh stay tuned for that build to be finished very soon and come back next week for this build thank you guys for watching and uh, i'll see you on the next one god bless
Rub Your Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts. And when making your purchase, use the Red Beard discount code in the upper right hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Red Beard's Garage. I'm out.